Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today I want to talk about thyroid pain and I want to talk about some conditions that can result in thyroid pain and then perhaps more importantly what you can do about it. So let's let's jump in here. We'll talk a little bit about neck pain and thyroid pain first and talk about whether or not it's serious. So believe it or not, thyroid conditions in general, conditions such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis, thyroid cancer, hypothyroidism, etc. Those are all very common. But what's interesting is that in terms of symptoms and presentation, thyroid pain is not common at all, and it is almost always abnormal. Well, I shouldn't say almost always, it always is abnormal, okay? No matter what, if you have thyroid pain, true thyroid pain, then it's an abnormal finding. Now, um, some of the most common conditions that, that can uh, present with this, we'll go over in just a minute, but I just want to start out first by saying that. So the question is, what other symptoms might you have if you are also experiencing thyroid pain? Because if you have thyroid pain, that means something is happening inside your thyroid gland, and it's almost always going to cause other symptoms related, related to your thyroid itself. So the way that you have pain is usually because there's an inflammatory process or something has been trauma or traumatized from, from either exit from outside or inside, and it's released uh, inflammatory cytokines and your body comes and causes a little bit of local inflammation and that's sort of that bruising um, pattern that you see if it happens elsewhere in your body like on your muscles or, or elsewhere but the same thing happens in your thyroid gland or I should say can happen but if it does happen in your thyroid gland there's a very high chance that you're also going to have some interference with your body's ability to produce thyroid hormone and anytime you have an inability or an excessive production of thyroid hormone, you're going to experience some symptoms. Now, most of the time, thyroid pain is associated with, with these symptoms, um, and usually it's associated with a temporary um, increase in thyroid hormone, which makes patients feel like they're hyperthyroid. So the symptoms they might feel in addition to thyroid pain include things like anxiety, fatigue, heart, heart palpitations, hot flashes, diarrhea, irritability, tremors or shaking of your hands, and then of course, sometimes rapid weight loss. Now, this doesn't happen in every single person, but it's the most common set of symptoms that accompany thyroid pain. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if you have thyroid pain and let's say that you've damaged your thyroid gland, well, it can release excessive hormone because of that inflammation, but it can also inhibit your body's ability to produce enough thyroid hormone. And if that happens, then you might experience some of the symptoms of hypothyroidism. So those symptoms include things like temporary weight gain. Well, in fact, they're just the exact opposite of the things what we went over previously with hyperthyroidism, and you probably know them, but I'll go over them anyway. So temporary weight gain, fatigue or low energy, hair loss, dry skin, constipation, depression, as opposed to anxiety, just overall sensation that you're not feeling like yourself, and then of course, menstrual irregularities. So those are the symptoms that tend to accompany thyroid pain. Now let's talk about what actually causes thyroid pain. So the most common cause of thyroid pain, and probably the you know if you go into your doctor and and you say I have thyroid pain, or they suspect that you have thyroid pain, this is the condition they're probably thinking that you have, and it's called subacute thyroiditis. Now thyroiditis just means inflammation of the thyroid gland. We've talked about that a little previously a little bit, and subacute means it's somewhere in between acute and chronic. So acute in, in the medical world means something happened really quickly and you're experiencing those side effects right now. So if you got punched in the gut that's an, and, your, and your stomach is hurting, that's an acute sensation, okay, because it happened right then and there and you're feeling the effects right then and there. Chronic, on the other hand, means that it's low, uh, it's slow, it's progressive, you're experiencing these symptoms constantly over a long period of time. So that would be th something like irritable bowel syndrome. Th that, that kind of pain that you get from irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic symptom. The pain that you get from getting punched in the gut is an acute symptom, okay, even though they're both technically pain in the gut. So subacute thyroiditis means that it's somewhere in between that acute and chronic phase, meaning subacute, and there's just inflammation of the thyroid gland. Now, usually this is caused by an infection of the thyroid gland which is important because hardly any, we haven't really probably talked much about um, infections of the thyroid gland. Most commonly, this is a viral infection, which just kind of comes and goes away on its own. But while there's an infection located in, in your thyroid, it's very, very, very painful. So you can kind of think, of think of this in a similar way to something like strep throat. So if you have, which is, strep throat's different in that it's a bacterial infection, but you can imagine how painful it is, especially in your throat, when you get that infection in that area. So imagine that same process when you, that occurs in strep throat, because most people have probably had it, that same process is occur occurring in your thyroid gland. So it's very exquisitely painful, even to the touch. If you just tap it on their neck, it's, it's very painful. Now, so subacute thyroid, thyroiditis, number one, it can be from any cause of infection. Normally, it's virus, and normally it comes and it goes away on its own without any treatment. It could be bacterial, uh, but it also could be fungal as well, so you do need to get it checked out. Um, the second 
uh, another com another cause, I shouldn't say common because it's not common, but another cause of thyroid pain is from the condition Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So this is another inflammatory condition. Remember the name. Thyroiditis means inflammation of the thyroid gland. But in this case, it's not because of an infection. It's because of an autoimmune disease. An autoimmune disease means your body is attacking itself. Now, you would think that if your body, if your own immune system was attacking and killing your thyroid gland, that would probably be painful. That's, and it just really, that isn't the case, um, actually. So the majority of patients with Hashimoto's thyroiditis have absolutely no pain. In fact, they're, they're, they experience symptoms, but they experience the symptoms of usually hypothyroidism and sometimes hyperthyroidism, but they rarely ever have thyroid pain, even though their thyroid can become enlarged and you can actually see it visibly um, through the skin on their neck. But it is a potential cause of thyroid pain. So if you're if you do have thyroid pain you do want to get looked at to at least make sure it's not Hashimoto's thyroiditis number three this is um, so I put number three as lymphadenopathy what lymphadenopathy means is it's a it's a way to describe lymph nodes which have become enlarged and sometimes these lymph nodes can become painful and so there are lymph nodes that go right down um, around and near your thyroid gland and so I've included this here because sometimes you might think that your thyroid is the thing causing you pain but it might actually be your lymph nodes Okay, and so these are there's lymph nodes all over in your neck. So there, but there especially there are uh, there's a chain of lymph nodes that come right down right near the thyroid gland and also on the lateral sides of your neck as well. Um, these are different than the thyroid gland. They can be if you're experienced and you understand what they feel like, you can you can actually touch these things and they're usually tender right when you touch them. So like. They're not tender around the area, they're directly tender on the lymph node itself. Whereas your thyroid is a little bit larger, and so anywhere you poke on the thyroid, if it's inflamed, you'll feel that pain. So there, there are ways that you can distinguish this, but I wanted to include it, include it here as well. Number four, another potential cause is thyroid cancer. Again, don't let it freak you out because thyroid cancer typically does not cause any pain in your thyroid gland. So there are, there are some rare forms of cancer which grow just excessively fast and those cancers can sometimes present with pain they can sometimes damage the tissues um, on your skin they they carry with them a very poor prognosis there but luckily they're they're very rare cancers so general run-of-the-mill thyroid cancer which something like you know 90 percent of people have that's not the cancer that's going to cause thyroid pain although thyroid cancer can cause lymphadenopathy but just to make this a little more complicated if your lymph nodes are enlarged from cancer they're usually not painful Okay, so it's, that's just kind of the way that it goes. Lymphadenopathy, if your lymph nodes are painful, that's usually a sign of an infection, which can kind of come along with um, subacute thyroiditis like we talked about, so either viral or bacterial. And then the last one, number five, is postpartum thyroiditis. So this is a, this you can really think of this as a variant of Hashimoto's thyroiditis because it occurs after pregnancy and it's usually um, the result of uh, the mother's body, which tries to calm down the immune system so the body doesn't attack the fetus while it's, while it's in utero. And sometimes this can cause changes in the immune system, which can lead to an increased risk of, of, an, of thyroiditis or inflammation of the thyroid gland. So it's kind of probably on the spectrum of Hashimoto's, but not quite all the way there. Now, most, most women who have postpartum thyroiditis don't experience thyroid pain, but it can occur just like it can occur in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So I won't spend too much time on that, but if you're if you're in the postpartum period, which includes up to 12 months after giving birth, and you you know just happen to touch your neck or you find that your neck is enlarged or tender, that may be an early sign that you have postpartum thyroiditis. And again, never normal. So what do you do? Well, the treatment really depends on the cause. Um, some of these conditions are very hard to treat. And so we'll just go over this real fast. So subacute thyroiditis normally goes away on its own. Um, if it's not going away on its own, then you're going to have to probably undergo some serious treatment with antibiotics. Um, or um, antifungals or something like that. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a chronic treatment, so there's not really an acute thing that you can do to treat it right away. I do have some information on my blog, but just to give you an idea, there's not like something that you can just take right away and you know swallow a supplement and boom, it's gonna go away. Lymphadenopathy, same thing, it depends on what the cause was from. It could be from cancer, but that's generally not painful, or it could be from an infection that's there, but just goes away. So think about that. Um, thyroid cancer, that treatment is not uh, the treatment is usually well it just depends but um, on which type of thyroid cancer you have but it could be removal of your thyroid gland could be um, which co combined with radioactive iodine um, or um, chemotherapy um, but that's usually um, uncommon and then postpartum thyroiditis tends to go away on its own so it's difficult and it kind of depends on what the cause is but having said that there are some things that you can do so generally what you want to do is if, the, if you feel like there's inflammation or pain in the thyroid gland 
you're going to want to try and reduce the inflammation. Um, and you can do that through several ways. The, the things that I've listed here include certain supplements like alpha lipoic acid, turmeric, or fish oil. These are all anti-inflammatory supplements, which may help to cool down that inflammation and prevent your body from attacking your own thyroid gland. Now, it's probably not going to work in all cases, but that may be the best option that you can do. Another thing would be looking at your diet. So stay away from inflammatory foods. Certain foods cause inflammation in the body and they cause dysfunction in the gut. And all of these things may also be contributing to your to your inflammation in just a tiny way. And so you can look at those, um, you can look at supplements such as well, I'm, the ones I mentioned up there. And then also in some cases, you might want to consider temporary use of uh, NSAIDs, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So things like ibuprofen or naproxen, or there's a bunch of medications in this class, but they're usually available over the counter. And what they do is they work by inhibiting, well, they work in a similar way as some of these supplements do. Um, but they attack it from a different pathway. So it's kind of blocking your body's ability to attack itself or start and, and continue on that inflammation cascade. So you can use these as well. If you do have thyroid pain though, you have to get checked out. You need to go to your doctor. You should be, you know, you need to be evaluated for all of these things. And they're fairly easy. You can get some basic tests and they can tell you what, what is going on and, and why you're experiencing pain. So that's pretty much all I have. If you have any questions, if you have thyroid pain for a long time, um, you're not sure what it is, I recommend look at those things, um, but leave a comment, uh, share your experience below, and um, I'll do my best to answer and get back to you. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.